Welcome back, learners. Um, I hope you had a nice quick rest. Now let's continue. We're going to look at probability. Probability refers to the chance or the likelihood of an event occurring, which can be expressed as a fraction, a percentage, or a decimal number. So as a fraction, if ever we are talking about 50% chances that something will happen, then we are saying that as a fraction, it will be expressed as 1 over 2, as a percentage, it will be expressed as 50%, and as a decimal number, it will be expressed as 0 0.5. So these are the only three ways in which we can express probability. It, um, the, 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 the probability can never be expressed as a ratio. So it means you can never write probability as 1 is 2, 2. So this is completely wrong. So we don't express probability as a ratio. We only express it as a fraction, as a percentage, and as a decimal number. For an example, when two soccer teams are playing against each other, chances are one team might win, the other team might lose, and also that the other both teams might have a draw. So there are actually three options when teams are playing against each other. It means when the other wins, the other one loses. When the other loses, the other one wins, or both teams can draw, whereby neither of the teams has either won or um, lost. Then we go to the next one. When a learner writes an exam, the probability is that he or she might pass or fail an exam. So you can do all your studying, and if you've done your studying properly and you know what you're going to write, chances are you might pass. Actually, there's a greater chance that you might pass. But if ever you did not study for an exam or a test, then the greatest chance is that you might fail that test or that particular exam. Then experiment now refers to an activity involving observing and recording results. So whenever you look at that particular event occurring, then you observe it. Um, after observing, then you record the results. So if a learner has written a test, obviously they will be observed. How, how are they observed? Normally they write in a quiet place and there's monitors there, there's invigilators there. So they write that exam, that is part of the observations. Then when they're done writing, the teacher will mark while also observing and looking at what the learner has written, marking the exam and all that. And then afterwards they record the results, how the learner has performed in that particular test. So that is the, um, that is the experiment. Then for an example, when tossing a coin, the outcome can either be a head or a tail. So whenever you take your coin and you toss it, that is like observing or um, looking at the particular event taking place. Then when you record that, um, that particular event, then you would basically write down whether the coin has landed on a tail or the coin has landed on a head. Then now we're going to look at expressing probability. How are we expressing probability? We said probability can be expressed in the following ways. It is either as a percentage, as a common fraction, as a decimal number. Um, so as a percentage, we talked of 50% um, chances that something can happen. Then it means that is the probability being expressed as a percentage. If it's a common fraction, 50% can be expressed as 1 over 2, or um, it can be 5 over 10, it can be 6 over 12. So this can be expressed in any way, as long as it's a common fraction. And what is a common fraction? Whereby we have the numerator being less than the denominator. That is a common fraction. But the moment we have 9 over over six, then now this becomes an improper fraction. So it, it is not how we express probability. Because in this regard, we are, we are actually saying that the favorable outcomes can never be more than the, all the possible outcomes. Then we've got a decimal number. So one over two can be expressed as 0 0.5. So these are the three ways that we can express our probability. We often make uh, predictions about future events by describing the likelihood of an event actually happening. So we always make predictions by describing how or how often has that particular thing happened before. So if an event will definitely not okay, we often say that there's no chance or there's 0% chances or it is impossible that that thing will happen. Therefore, the probability is zero. So what is an example of such an event when we say pigs will fly tomorrow? So pigs will fly tomorrow. We know that there's no chance that something like that will ever happen. So it means there's 0% chances that it will happen. And it's basically impossible that that um, particular thing will happen. So the probability is actually zero. Then if an event will definitely okay, 
we often say that the event is certain to happen and the probability is 100%. So a, an example for such an event will be that the sun will rise tomorrow. So we know that after night, there should be morning. So there's a definite that that thing will happen. The sun might not shine, but it will definitely rise. So when it rises, we say it is certain that the sun will rise and the probability is 100%. So we are 100% sure that the sun will rise tomorrow. Then we've got the last one. If an event may occur, but equally likely that it might not occur. We often speak of 50-50 chances and the probability is 50%. So we'll make an example with maybe watching a, watching a soccer match. We are not anticipating a draw. So we are only anticipating that there is a team that will win and there is a team that will lose. So if ever we are only talking about winning and losing, then we are saying that there's 50% chances that the team might win and there's 50% chances that that team might lose. So that is the anticipation of um, a, soccer, a soccer match. That is only if you are not thinking of a draw altogether. Then there we have a probability scale. Probability scale is normally used to make these predictions, whereby we know that this is the three way, um, not the three ways, but this is how we can express our probability. So in words, when we are saying it in words, we are saying if ever there's the probability is zero, then we know that it is impossible that that event might occur. And it's also at zero percent chances. Then if ever we are saying um, it is very unlikely. So if it's very unlikely, we are talking of 0 0.2, which is probably 20% chances that that thing will happen. So the reason why we are saying it's very unlikely is because this 20% is actually more closer to being impossible than being certain. So that is why we say it's very unlikely. So the chances of it occurring, uh, the chances of it occurring are very slim than the chances of it not. Um, the chances of it occurring are very slim than the chances of it occurring. Then we go to unlikely. Unlikely, we have also 0 0.4. It is more the same, more or less the same, like very likely, very unlikely. But unlikely also means that it is more closer to being impossible than being certain. So when we say something is unlikely that it might happen, it doesn't mean it will not happen, and it does not mean it will happen. But we are saying there's, there's a greater chance that it might not happen than having a greater chance that it will definitely happen. Then at even chances, we are talking of 50-50 chances that there's 50, it might happen, it might not happen. So we are not talking of unlikely or very unlikely or likely, but we are saying there's a 50% chance that it might happen and there's another 50% chance that it might not happen. So it's basically in between. Then we go to likely. Likely is probably 60%. So when it's 60%, 0 0.6, then we are saying it's more closer to being possible to being uh, possible or certain than being impossible. So that is why we are saying it's likely that it will happen. So the chances of it happening are more than the chances of it not happening. Then we go to very likely. Very likely now we are, we are talking of like 80% and above. So 80% and above we are saying it is more closer to being certain than being impossible. So there, the chances of it happening are very high than the chances of it not happening. So even if you can check on this number line, it is far away from being impossible than it is to being um, certain. Then we go to certain. Certain is the definite one. It is, we are sure that that thing will definitely happen. So we are at 100%. So the prediction about future events can be plotted on, on, on this probability scale where we're using a number scale. What is the probability of the following as a percentage, fraction, and as a decimal number? So we must express the probabilities of the following as a percentage, as a fraction, and as a decimal number. A, tossing a coin up into the air and it falls down. So whenever we toss a coin up, we are definitely sure that it will definitely come back down. So it means the chances as a percentage, it will be 100%. As a fraction, it will be 1 over 1, 
which is 1, and as a decimal number, it will be 1.0, which is 1. So this is the, um, how do we express probability in the three ways. Then B, tossing a coin into the air and it never comes down. So we know that that will never happen. So whenever we toss, whenever we take something and we throw it up in the air, it must definitely come down. So the chances of it not coming down, that is impossible. So we know that it is 0% as a percentage. It is 0 as a fraction. It will be 0 as a decimal number. Then what is the probability of the following also as a percentage, a fraction, and a decimal number? A coin tossed into the air and lands with the, with the head faced up. So with the head faced up, chances are, remember, we only have the head and the tail. So we've got 50% chances for both. So we might get, there's a 50% chance that it might land on the head, which is the same as 1 over 2, and which is the same as 0 0.5. So we've expressed it in the three forms. Then question two, choose a description which, which best matches the following probability values. So number one, we've got... 1.0. 1.0, remember probability can never be more than 1. So the moment it's 1, it means that is a definite, that is a certain. So what, which word will match this? It's definitely the certain. So when it's 1.0, it is certain that that particular event will occur. Then when it's 0, with 0 we know that that thing will never happen. So it means it is impossible. So you write there, it is impossible. Then 0 0.5, 0 0.5, if ever it makes sense, it makes more sense to actually convert it to a percentage. Then you rather convert it to a percentage to be able to explain it uh, a bit better. So if it's 0 0.5, converting it to a percentage is 50%. So when it's 50%, we know that it's even chances. Even chances meaning that there is 50 and 50 on the other side. So this is even chances. Then we've got 0 0.72. 0 0.72, when you convert it to a percentage, you know um, it's going to be 72%. So you simply take the 0 0.2 and then you multiply it by 100, it's going to give you 72%. So when it's 72%, we know that it is more closer to being certain than being um, impossible. So it is the likely. So this means it is likely. Then we move on to now question three. Complete the following table by filling in the missing values. So we are given the um, ways in which we can express probability. Now we have to complete this table. So in this table, we are given that it is um, three for three point. Okay, for the first one, we are given the table, this column completed. We've got 12.5%, which as a decimal is 0 0.125. And as a common fraction is 125 over 1000. And probability should always be written in its simplest form. So when you can when you write this in its simplest form, then it's going to be one over eight. Then we've got 3.1 now. We are given the decimal number and we are given the percentage of, I mean, the common fraction. So what we have to do is now to write it as a percentage. So you can either take your zero point, you say 0 0.07 on the calculator, then you press your equal sign. It will give you um, 7, 7 over 100. Then we multiply it by 100 to get a percentage because now we have to write it as a percentage. So it gives you 7%. Then the next one, for, you are given the percentage, which is 40%. You are also given the common fraction, which is 2 over 5. Now you have to write it as a decimal number. So you can simply just say um, 2 divided by 5. You say equal sign, then you press the SD button to convert it to a uh, decimal number, which is going to give you 4, 0 point, um, sorry about that, let's write it correctly, 0 0.4. So it's 0 0.4 as a decimal. Even if you just take it as it is, remember 40%, it's going to be on a decimal point, which is going to be 0. You take your 0, and then the 4 becomes on the other side. Then we are given 5%, and we're also given the decimal number, which is 0 0.05. Now you have to write it as a common fraction. So you can simply take that common um, number, I mean that um, decimal number, it's 0 0.05, and you say equals 2, it gives you 1 over 20 then that is how we express probability. Then let's take a break and then we will continue afterwards. <laughs> 